Hey, good morning to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here, Tuesday now, the 15th of July. Coming to you from Fort Worth, Texas, as I'm on my way back from the Bend West after collecting my Toyota Tacoma yesterday from Wichita. All done with severe weather season, now focusing entirely on the hurricane season in front of us. And wouldn't you know it, we have Invest Area at 93L. So I am here today to tell you all about what to expect from this system. So let's jump right in. Feet first, as they say, and let's get started. First of all, the dashboard from the Tropical Tidbit site. I want to show you a couple things here. This is the infrared satellite. You look at this, it's hard to discern exactly what's going on. If you know even a little bit about meteorology and tracking cloud uh, animations and whatnot, you can probably tell that this is some pretty deep thunderstorm activity coming on shore there around uh, just north of the Space Coast. Maybe the Bucky's there along I-95 at Daytona, Ormond Beach, A1A, I-95, the I-4 corridor, at least the beginnings of it. Kind of stormy out there. But let's shift down and look at the visible version of this satellite animation. This is a high-res visible. Now, this really tells us a lot more about what's going on. There's the low-level center, clearly, and you can also see that it is moving up here to the northwest probably going to come on shore up here somewhere around Jacksonville or St. Augustine. And then the deeper thunderstorms are down to the south. It's disheveled. It's being sheared. There's some dry air. And it's just not very organized overall. So I do not expect, and neither does the Hurricane Center or anybody with any common sense, that this would become something intense in terms of, well, let's just say it, a hurricane. And I, mean, I mentioned that because I got some text messages yesterday some from friends in Louisiana, very worried that this could be a hurricane because they were seeing stuff on social media where people were posting different models that showed this being a hurricane. No, not this time. I mean, I'm 95% sure. But what we do have to focus on is what I really want to really emphasize through the rest of the video today is the rainfall potential from our system here. It's tropical in nature. It's over very warm water. It's going to traverse the northern Gulf, and the potential for some flooding rain is definitely going to be there as we go forward. But let's put to bed any thought that this is going to become a hurricane. None of the intensity guidance is anywhere near it. Uh, at the very worst or least or whatever you want to call it, depending on your perspective, um, minimal tropical storm. But that's like a week out. Like, where is it in a week, right? So just don't worry about the wind aspect to this, not going to be there. This is going to be a big rain problem. Tracks, we call this the spaghetti model plot, uh, among other ways to look at it, generally across the northern Florida peninsula. And then, yeah, maybe it stays up there and stays over land, or maybe this comes back out over the northern Gulf. We'll have to wait and see about that, how much structure is left. But regardless of any of that, it's not going to just go away there will be an appreciable area of energy, and that is going to produce a lot of rain. And we can see that energy. I just showed you on the satellite imagery of the visible shot. This is what it looks like from the vorticity perspective. And there it is. That's a pretty good dose of um, vorticity sitting out there. It's a little elongated and uh, not you know round and compact, but it is there. And that's going to move across the northern gulf and give us some problems. And uh, i got to let this radar here load, because it's got 50 frames, I think is what I put in there. This is from our friend Dr. Mark Nissenbaum, and this is off the Florida State site that he has set up for us. And you can see that very heavy rain pinwheeling in across areas north of Titusville, um, not quite reaching into Orlando proper just yet, but it's getting close. I-95, A1A, as I mentioned, very heavy rainfall across this region, so if you're traveling down here and you're going to go through that, slow it down, be careful out there, don't need your hydroplaning and running into that fence that they've got along the interstate, that big steel rope fence that they put up. They have that on 95, I think they do, but really, you got to be careful, you got to watch the rainfall, all right? Our friend up there at Fox Weather, Mr. Maloney, uh, I thought this was a very good tweet here, the low-level circulation, LLC, uh, and that's not a limited liability corporation, we're talking weather here, is ejecting north, and I showed you that on the animation, and the brief window where it could have been considered a depression is ending. It's all about how well the mid-level vortex can hold together. It strengthened overnight, and we can see that a little bit here 
on the vorticity signature, the mid-level vortex sitting right in here somewhere. That did tighten up a little bit, as Jared points out. However, we're going to have to wait and see because of the lack of truly deep convection, and you can see even on his still image here, uh, really limited it. So there's just not a lot for this thing to work with. Model-wise, global models, let's look, look at the GFS from the 6Z run. There it is right there. I think you know what I'm looking at. Let's use this blue color just to highlight it, just to be sure. So that's our system. That's the vorticity signature of it, the low-level energy down at around 5,000 feet. And you see it's just not much. You know, the GFS certainly brings it inland, kind of keeps it there, spills some of the energy back out over the northern, north-central Gulf. And no, not a big wind and surge maker. Yes, all of this is energy. And this tells me big time rain. And that is what we need to focus on. Uh, if there's one thing, I said this often recently, that we're going to do around here is we're going to retrain people to not worry so much about, is it going to be a hurricane? And focus on, well, what is it going to be? What are my impacts going to be? And in this situation, it is going to be the rainfall. And I can point to this, look at those water temperatures, very, very warm. But again, don't look at this and go, oh, that's fuel for it to strengthen. Yes, but everything else has to be there for it to strengthen. And I just showed you the other ingredients, the other structural, shear, land interaction, all that is going to go against strengthening. But what this very warm water does give us is lots of low-level moisture. The precipitable water values in the atmosphere are going to be ridiculous. And we can see that the water temperatures are above normal as well. So all of this, to me, screams the potential for a high-impact rain event. And you have rain, wind, storm surge, and microburst and tornadoes. Those are the main impacts from tropical cyclones. We can take the wind and the surge uh, out of the equation, probably your microburst, maybe a tornadic threat, but the rain, I think, could be a really, really big problem. Our good friend Ben Knoll, he's on it. Of course he is. The tropical system that will track across the northern Gulf, of course, 93L, is forecast to have near record high precipitable water when it reaches Louisiana on Thursday, Friday. This is a warning shot. This is telling us about the moisture content of our system, the precipitable water, PWAT that we call it in the biz, the amount of water, basically, it's just so much saturated, uh, the lower levels of the atmosphere, lower to mid levels, that any kind of lift mechanism, convergence, focusing mechanism, we saw that in Kerrville, something that can trigger this to uh, rain, it rains excessively so. And that's what's going to be a big problem for our friends in Louisiana, maybe uh, Alabama, Mississippi as well. So that's what we're going to focus on in the coming days. All right? I'll be on top of it, obviously. You can follow Ben and anybody else that's obviously reliable. Stick to it, right? And, and, and get what you need to know. So listen, this evening, very, very excited about this. We have a special mid-year YouTube Live event. I'm going to be joined by my friend and colleague, CJ Morgan. He and I will host this YouTube Live, and we're going to have different guests come on, hopefully, as they say, scheduled, uh, Paige and uh, Bryce, you know them. If you've been watching their YouTube, they've really been growing a lot, especially this year. They recently got engaged in front of a tornado. We'll talk about that a little bit, but I really want to talk about life on the road as storm chasers, especially full-time. I'm going to bring in, and I say scheduled, hopefully they'll join us. They may be busy. We shall see. Uh, but I'll try to talk them into it one way or the other. But Dylan Federico, my good friend here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, he'll join me. And then our good friend, you know her from Weather Brains, Jen Naramore, historic tornado like guru. And we're going to talk about sort of why we are fixated on severe weather as a general principle. And then what is so fascinating about tornadoes that it captivates us so much that some of these creators on YouTube in the weather world have amassed more than a million subscribers. Really, there's that many people that are interested in tornadoes? Apparently so. So we're going to talk about that and, of course, a look ahead to the rest of the hurricane season. All live, all just completely unscripted, a lot of fun, just a lot of free-flowing ideas and information. We're going to look at the uh, the YouTube uh, chat a lot, 
get input from you all, questions that you might have. So that's tonight, this evening, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time we get started, and uh, it ends when it ends, so tune in. Lastly, we do have some of our maps left, so if you want one, get a paper-sized, paper it better be, poster-sized paper tracking map. Go to that link right there. I'll put a, uh, a link in the description of today's video. It's only 20 bucks. I put it in an envelope. I got some with me, ready to ship out if you want one. We have a couple dozen left, so go to that link. I'll put it in the description of today's video. I just said that, didn't I? And you can get one for yourself. All right? Very good. So we'll be watching 93L, see what happens with it. Big Rainmaker, that's the big headline. Let's pay attention to that and not worry about all this hurricane talk that we saw. Anybody posting the, the latest? Anyway, you know how that goes. Um, we're going to focus on what we know, and we know this is going to be a big rainmaker. All right? Have a good rest of your Tuesday. I'll see you this evening from all of us at Hurricane Track. We're looking forward to that. See you at around 7 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a few hours.